So Vanguard and Warzone Season 2 have just launched and in the game weapons have a lot of levels you need to get through so today I'm going to be sharing the fastest ways to level up your guns by getting more weapon XP in Season 2 of both Vanguard and Warzone. So I'm going to be covering the fastest ways to level up your weapons in Vanguard multiplayer and zombies, then Warzone and then the best weapon XP boosts and then finally we'll talk about which game slash mode is best overall so stay tuned so you don't miss out on any important tips but if you do want to jump to a specific part of the video there will be timestamps in the description so feel free to make use of those. I'll have playlists and videos for camera guides, best class setups, tips and tricks videos, a guide on how to level up the battle pass fast, that kind of thing so feel free to check them all out there'll be links in the description and a card on screen. Without further ado though let's get into the tips on how to level up these weapons fast. So starting off with Vanguard multiplayer then the best game modes at the moment will be one Ones with more enemies, a fast pace and lots of potential kills, so these are ones like obviously Shipment, Das House, that kind of playlist. If they've got a 24-7 playlist of that, that's great. Or any other kind of new small map mosh pits is great too. In particular, hardcore versions of those modes are best, so especially hardcore ship house 24 7 anything like that is always really good as there's loads of enemies who have really low health and die easily and it's really useful especially for weapons that are more difficult to use or get kills with or for new weapons where you've got no attachments unlocked you've just started using it this is a good way i always recommend hardcore so the kind of gold standard for getting weapon xp files would be hardcore ship house 24 7 something like that whatever you do try and make it hardcore and try and make it small map mosh pit now if these aren't available you could choose other close quarters combat mosh pit modes or generic modes like obviously you've got ones like kill confirmed domination tdm patrol free for all those kind of modes champion hill used to be amazing for weapon xp but it's been slightly nerfed now so i mean the weapon xp is almost double the rate for kills in other modes but the fact that matches take longer and you're less likely to get a lot of kills it's currently not the best mode plus you can only use a certain number of weapons in that mode and obviously it has to be one of the ones you're trying to level up so it makes it more difficult really but if you are playing it and you are using a weapon that you're trying to level up it can be good for weapon xp so useful in certain circumstances but i don't recommend it for the vast majority of cases now let's quickly talk about combat pacing in multiplayer this is i'm sure you guys all know about it by now but this is basically a setting in the game that determines how many players will be in your matches tactical's the lowest assaults the medium and blitz is the most with blitz obviously it's gonna be more hectic and large there's gonna be loads more enemies you're probably more likely to die so after a recent update just to let you guys know the weapon xp earned per kill changed depending on the combat pacing of the game so tactical always gives slightly more weapon xp per kill now and both assault and blitz pacings actually give the exact same amount of weapon XP. Hence if you can do well in Blitz this is the best mode or if you die too much like I say Assault may be best. So which maps do you want to be playing on? Obviously you can't really vote for them but in terms of which ones you want to try and get on when you can these will be ones like Das House, Shipment, Radar, those kind of ones. If any of the new Season 2 DLC maps are good obviously those as well but there's other good maps like Castle, Hotel Royale, Dome, any kind of ones like that are always good so try and go for them when you can. Other sources of weapon XP in multiplayer will be things like getting assists so it obviously it gives you a similar amount of XP to getting kills. The Destroying enemy equipment, score streaks, field upgrades, it's easy XP, so for example shooting down a spy plane or something like that, so obviously you can do that when possible and also try to scout out enemies so make use of UAVs, minimaps, footsteps or noises to try and find where enemies are, head towards them, get the kills. Moving on to Vanguard Zombies then, so currently we've got the Duran Fang map so for this just want to let you guys know the critical hit i.e. the headshot kills or melee kills with the weapon no longer get you a bonus amount of weapon XP compared to normal zombie kills unlike previously so it doesn't matter how you kill them as long as you kill them with your weapon whether it's meleeing, a headshot or just a normal shot that's all fine. Most of the weapon XP in zombies actually comes from completing the objectives but a small amount will come from zombie kills elsewhere on the map so kind of the zombies in the spore area you know the main hub between objectives will get you a little bit of xp but most of the weapon xp will come from actually doing those objectives so you want to get through those objectives as fast as possible while getting as many kills as you can if that makes sense fairly self-explanatory but we're going to talk about the best method now because it changed quite a bit compared to sort of weeks and months ago so it's worth kind of listening to this strategy so the best fastest method right now is something like this you want to spawn in initiate a blitz objective by activating the blitz portal and while waiting to teleport to the blitz objective kill as many zombies as you can in the spawn area there'll be about six to ten to give yourself a small xp boost without wasting time and then you want to complete the blitz objective now like i say blitz is currently the best objective mode to do as it gives you the fastest xp per minute compared to other modes so you obviously you want to kill as many zombies as you can the first objective before the one minute timer runs out as soon as you get the same xp for shooting a zombie getting a headshot or just meleeing with the weapon it makes sense to shoot them when they're further away quick many of the ones that you're closer to to increase the amount of kills you get in the blitz objective obviously you can also melee lots of them if you're needing to reload or or you're about to run out of time obviously quickly melee them but obviously bear in mind it's good for lower rounds but in higher rounds zombies have
have more health and so it's more difficult milling. But in round one, it's fairly simple. The zombies have enough health just to take them out with one hit. And so it's a really quick way to get the kills if you're trying to get as many as you can before the objective finishes. Now don't forget to go up to the purple barriers to see if there are any zombies out of sight that are heading towards you and use your minimap to get a good idea of where they are and where they're coming from. Once you complete the first objective and return to the spawn area, look for another blitz objective and complete it if it's available. And similar to the first time after activating the second portal, kill any zombies in the spawn area to get some more weapon XP. Don't exclusively try to target them because you don't get a ton of it, but it's still worth getting some. And so just while you're waiting for that portal to start up, then when you teleport, obviously do the second objective. And then after doing that second objective, in which hopefully it would have been two blitzes, so basically from round three onwards up to six, blitz becomes less efficient and another mode like transmit is best as it can be completed much faster but if transmit's not available blitz is still okay what you really want to try and avoid is purge and harvest they're kind of the two worst modes for weapon xp in terms of how quickly you can do it and how efficiently you can do it they're okay you know if there's nothing else around i suppose you could do it but it's really really best to try and do blitz for the first two and then ideally switching to transmit if you can and that's because you can quickly complete it faster than you will be able to complete the uh, blitz one because each time you do it it goes up by 30 seconds so it takes longer to finish a blitz objective compared to transmit where you just run around the map with the zombie orb and before you know it you've completed it so keep doing that between round three up to six with ideally transmit but could be blitz or anything else really but that's probably the best and then don't waste your time using covenant upgrades and things like that you could do if you want if you've got time but don't waste time over it you could pack a punch as well once but it's really not essential unless it helps you get a lot more kills and it might be worth picking up some perks along the way while doing an objective if you're going past it that's fine but don't go out of your way to get the perks either but then once you've got to round six you could go for another objective but it'll take longer and zombies will have more health so it's probably best at that point just to kind of get some zombie kills in the starting area you can exfil if you want but it's not essential and it's not worth it if you take too long to complete it and then you can exfil and finish and then restart but if you can't be bothered to do that obviously just feel free to quit near the end of round six and you can start the whole process again and like i say this will get you sort of around sort of maybe six to ten thousand xp for your weapon in just over a 10 minute session so looking at about 600 to a thousand xp per minute with a double weapon xp token so pretty decent obviously it can be high or low depending on how you do but that's just sort of an average and then for the new zombies map so terra maledicta it seems like it'll be a very similar strategy obviously it's got the same objectives and so on but i'll make a new video once that map releases and we get a chance to play it because obviously we've got a new objective and a new map there might be some changes with that so i'll kind of make a new video on that but yeah this is kind of the best, best strategy for now i would assume do a very similar thing if you're playing the new map terra maledicta and then once we get to play with that we can kind of talk about what might be best so we've talked about vanguard zombies and multiplayer now let's move on to warzone and this has got a lot more options to it but we'll kind of talk through it so obviously in warzone you want to get as many kills as you can with the weapons in the pre-game lobby especially in plunder as you get your custom loadout as these will obviously count towards your weapon levels you normally get about 100 weapon xp for every kill you get in that pre-game lobby so it's always worth it also you can equip the pointsman perk which basically allows you to earn more money for completed missions but it also gives extra xp and weapon xp too but only equip it if you're playing sort of battle royale or rebirth not for plunder because the main effect of it is the perk basically starts the contact streak as if you've already done one contract so you, i think you get about a 40 percent bonus or so but there's no contract streak bonuses in plunder it's only if so basically it's only effective like i say for vanguard royale or battle royale or rebirth but the benefits of this perk do stack so if you are playing br or rebirth and you've got other teammates playing with if they all run it it will actually stack up to sort of 120 percent uh, weapon xp bonus just for all having the same perk equipped so it's actually really effective especially if you're playing with teammates but if you're playing plunder and one of my main strategies here is to play plunder then it's not needed so only play it if you're doing br or rebirth so i think plunder is generally best and that's because you get infinite lives custom loadouts no guest cloud and obviously an overtime bonus as well so all those things really help to make it a good mode but there are some times where you don't want to use plunder and i'll explain when in just a short while so what you want to do in plunder if you're playing that is you want to grab a helicopter or a fast vehicle like an atv quad bike or something like that then go around the map and collect as many contracts as you can now currently top Top secret is the best but you've also got other ones you know supply run recon bounty big bounty and most wanted they're also pretty good but like i say top secret is the best so the weapon xp earn rates for the contracts are basically scavenger recon and supply run give you 
500 weapon XP, whereas most wanted, bounty, big game bounty and contraband, when that's around, will all give you 750 weapon XP and just as a side note, the big game bounty poached, so basically when someone kills the person you're trying to kill, you get 250, whereas a normal bounty, if someone's poached, you get 150 weapon XP. So even if you pick up a bounty or a big game bounty and someone kills your target, you can still get weapon XP just for doing absolutely nothing. Top secrets will give you 750 and just as kind of a reference, a normal kill will get you 275, whereas a a team white kill basically where you kill the last player of that team will give you 450 weapon xp and a most wanted kill will basically give you a normal kill xp plus 250 on top of that so that's the breakdown top secret is the best contract in warzone they're always fairly quick and they're easy to do obviously it was bugged before where it would give you tons of xp by mistake so it offers basically a random contract of supply run scavenger bounty recon or most wanted it's more risky but it offers more weapon xp than the standard contract so for example supply runs normally on their own they're only give you 500 but if you get a supply run through a top secret basically you'll get 750 instead so it's always worth going for those if you can but they are quite popular so they won't last too long so try and get them near the start of the game if they've run out my next best one to go for generally are the big game bounty contracts. So these are fairly new to Caldera. They came in at launch and what you have to do is you basically have to go to one of the better players on the map and attempt to take them down. And you'll get 750 weapon XP for doing this. And I'd recommend if you are doing it, having stocked up on ammo or armor and picked up a UAV to help you find the enemy and take them down. If these aren't around or you know if it's a bit slow and you're not really good with getting bounties or big game bounties, then supply runs can be pretty good as well. That's still a really good strategy. So what you do, you can pick up a supply run contract. You have two minutes to get the buy station so you can use a helicopter or an atv or whatever get there quickly and you'll get 500 weapon xp just for completing that contract alternatively recon contracts are right they still offer you 500 but it takes slightly longer to do so it's not really worth it unless there's not many other contracts available or you have to kind of travel a long way to get one i'd always try and stick with the other ones but it is still decent if you can get them done as fast as you can and finally a good point to note is that the overtime when that happens so when someone earns two million dollars in plunder it'll go to overtime and basically you have a three minute countdown so this offers a 1.5 times bonus to money but also xp and weapon xp earned from contracts so it lasts about three minutes so you want to try and get at least one to two big contracts done near the end of the game during this overtime because you get 1.5 times the normal amount of weapon xp just from doing these contracts so it's always worth doing and i'd also say when the game is almost finished if you don't have time to complete another contract then quickly pick up a bounty or even better a big game bounty contract as when the match finishes if the player you were trying to hunt leaves the game before you after the match finishes then it currently counts as a bounty poach offering you an additional 150 to 250 weapon xp for doing absolutely nothing so this will be confirmed by an audio cue telling you that the player has been downed so basically yeah near the end of the game if you can just pick up one of these stay in the match until you hear that audio cue and that, that will give you a little bit extra weapon xp just for doing absolutely nothing don't know if that's going to get patched it may well do who knows but it should be there for the time being so doing contracts is great and can be much more efficient than just getting kills especially if you're not as great a player in warzone obviously the more contracts you do the more weapon xp you get but if you're and if you're playing br or rebirth the bigger the bonus too because of a contract bonus every time you do more so you obviously want to quickly do as many contracts as you can in a match using a fast vehicle and be sure to kill as many enemies as you can that you see along the way you could drop into a high flow area like airfields and get some kills if possible and then can complete contracts around that as well but uh, contracts is kind of the main focus I think for this and it's obviously best to play with teammates as that way they can help you get contracts done faster or do the contracts for you allowing you to earn the weapon XP rewards too whilst you're going for kills basically to effectively double the amount of weapon xp you can earn again excluding the other tips i mentioned in this video so like if you were getting kills and they were getting contracts you'd get the weapon xp for the contract because you're on the team but you'd also get the xp you get from doing kills so that's a really good strategy that's worth thinking about or alternatively if you're all in a team and one of you goes to actually pick up the contract and one of you goes around to actually go to where they need to go to finish the contract and that basically speeds up the process of doing the contract and you can get more done so both of those can actually help to get a lot more weapon xp when playing with teammates so it's definitely worth to keep that in mind and also you get some other bonuses which we'll talk about in a minute so that is the plunder method you've also got rebirth which is great as it's a small fast-paced map and you know more gunfights and so on it's a similar strategy to br and plunder but when double weapon xp is active in warzone actually just so you guys know activating a double weapon xp token alongside the event will effectively allow you to gain quadruple weapon xp i believe this is a glitch i'm not sure but it only works on rebirth not caldera so only the rebirth map and it only happens obviously when double weapon xp is active so when it is active as an event that they put on you want to play rebirth and complete 
as many contracts or get as many kills as possible when you've activated your token as well because doing both of those effectively gives you quadruple XP. So that's kind of the best time to play Rebirth. You don't have to do it all the time but it's one of the best times to do it. Otherwise I'd stick mainly to Plunder. But when double weapon XP events are around and you can get this quadruple XP I think it's actually can be a lot faster in Rebirth. So as long as this method is still active then definitely stick with Plunder but can go in Rebirth especially when this, when this method is around and possible. So other sources of weapon XP in Warzone World the simple things like getting assists, destroying enemy equipment and field upgrades, scouting out enemies, you know, making use of UAVs, minimap, footsteps, noises to try and find where they are and head towards them and get kill more kills. Those are kind of the other sources of weapon XP. Now let's talk about weapon XP boosts across Vanguard multiplayer and Warzone. Firstly, for Warzone and Vanguard, certain operators will have a favorite weapon, and when you're using that favorite weapon with a specific operator, you'll get a weapon XP boost. So, for example, the operator Daniel, his favorite weapon is the M1 Garand, Halima's favorite weapon is the MP40, Roland's one is the STG44 and so on. If you're using that operator with their favorite weapon, you get a boost to the amount of weapon XP you're earning. So check if any of the operators have the weapon you need to level up, as this obviously will speed up the process. You can do this in both Warzone and Vanguard, but you can't do it in Zombies, unfortunately. So something to bear in mind. Also, equipping the surplus kit attachment for all Vanguard weapons allows you to earn additional XP per kill. So it's a 20% boost of uh, XP, weapon XP and operator XP just for using the um, attachment. So you want to use it on every Vanguard weapon you need to level it up. Obviously all weapons in Vanguard, but in Warzone it's only the Vanguard weapons that you can use this attachment for. Playing with a clan member gives you a 10% weapon XP boost too, so play with a clan. Double weapon XP weekends are common, so obviously take advantage of these. Also using double weapon XP tokens, you know, you can get for example them from the PlayStation packs. Check the PS store, there's currently a new one for Season 2, so make use of that. There's also the For You section of the store, which often has free bundles including um, double weapon XP. XP tokens. Also leveling up the battle pass to certain tiers will give you double weapon XP tokens too. Finally if you're on PlayStation if you play with a teammate you'll get a 25% bonus so obviously pair that with all the other tips you'll get a massive boost from doing all these things. Finally I wanted to kind of talk about which mode is best and which game is best overall because it's very confusing there's all these different strategies and methods what one should you go for. Well I think currently multiplayer and warzone are the best for most scenarios as you can use you know your favorite operators surplus attachment the clan weapon XP and so on those things aren't necessarily all available in zombies however zombies weapon XP earn rates are pretty good I think it's been buffed since the game came out it's possibly slightly inferior especially due to the lack of equipable bonuses and so on but the zombies method is fairly consistent from game to game whereas with multiplayer matches might vary quite a bit depending on the skill of the players you're playing with zombies is also easier to grind for longer sessions with minimal effort a lack of having to try hard and kind of getting sweaty or annoyed if you know the game isn't going too well it can be really annoying to keep getting killed a lot by the other teammates and also it's easier to do while doing another task like watching TV or listening to music so I think if you want a more relaxed consistent method zombies is definitely the way to go at the moment the multiplayer and warzone have the slight edge because obviously they've got these bonuses that you can't use in zombies obviously if that changes then things might change a little bit but I think it's not so much of a massive difference that you should avoid zombies altogether and um, it's nice to have a mix to kind of make the grind a bit easier that's kind of my view on the whole matter so these are the fastest ways to level up your guns currently in Vanguard and Warzone in season two if you found these tips helpful leaving a like on the video would be appreciated so that other people can find it too make sure to check out my season two guide on how to level up the battle pass fast in warzone and vanguard as i previously mentioned i'm also making tons of other useful multiplayer zombies and warzone guides for season two so if any of this sounds good to you guys hitting the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon next to it to turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any of my latest videos would be greatly appreciated i'm also doing a cold points giveaway when I get to 30,000 subscribers. If you guys are interested in that, the rules will be in the description. But basically, all you have to do is like the video, comment your Twitter name below this video, click the subscribe button on my channel, and finally follow me on Twitter. My username is RagerGamer, that's in the description. So thank you all so much for watching the video, and hopefully I'll see you all on the next one.